Let's talk first about BHP Billiton, because this is one of the world's largest diversified natural resources groups. Remember, it's got iron ore, yes, principally in the Western Australian uh, environment, but it's also a major player in oil and gas in the Gulf of Mexico, and a very significant player in copper. It's got uh, some additional assets, which it's in the process of spinning out. It's a monster company. It used to be bigger, but its market cap, if you take all of the listed bits of it, which is London, Australia, New York here, comes to a $123 billion. That's about 1.5 trillion rand. Okay, pretty big company. In respect of its price to earnings ratio, well, that's slightly tricky to pin. I'm seeing there 12.3%. That's 12.3 rather for PE. That's probably correct looking at the prior numbers. And the dividend yield, interesting. In its most recent results, it held its progressive dividend distribution policies, paying out a big fat whopping amount. And they did signal that they were going to do that, and they were true to their word. The question, I guess, Wayne, is do you think they can continue to hold the dividend at that level? They should be able to. I mean, there's a very strong balance sheet. Yeah. I don't think there's a problem with holding the dividend unless prices collapse further. Yeah. Obviously, you don't hold dividends forever if you're actually yeah. incurring you know, losses, but they're not making so losses. Putting the balance sheet, sheet under some strain, sort of stress, yeah. Yeah. Look, they're, they're not making losses. They've still got good margins. These are high quality assets. Mm. So they can make, they still make margin at, at the current iron ore price and at the current other commodity prices. But obviously, if we see another 20, 30% fall in, in, in the actual prices, yeah. their margins will come under pressure. Yeah. Now, BHP, Although the share price has come so off. You're speaking about the share price. Yeah. Just look over your shoulder there. You can see it. The viewers are seeing it full screen. Yeah, so this it falls from 360, but it's looking slightly better at the end there. Yeah, look, this is one of the least disastrous falls in <laughs> share prices. In fact, yeah. this is one of the better ones. Yeah. Because of its diversified mm. nature, because of very strong balance sheet, not a single focus company, as we all know. Now, now, now they're taking strain. Earnings are down. All of the companies we're talking about are December year ends. Yeah. And understand, in the December, six months to December, they only had bad prices for three of those six mm. months. Whereas in the next period, mm. everything else being mm. equal, they'll have bad prices for six of the six yeah. months when they report it. So the news flow is not going to be good. We know yeah. that the earnings sequentially year on year are not going to be looking fabulous. Maybe in a year's time, they'll look better because the whole thing will have rebased. Correct. As far as Billiton is concerned, the other point that needs to be made is they are going to spin out this thing which is going to be called South 32, which is going to have some of the assets uh, in the sort of marginal stuff like nickel and uh, aluminium and there's going to be South Africa coal and so yeah. on. So if you own Billiton, you're going to get some of these as one well in your years. account, but it's going to be small. If you own 100,000 rands worth of Billiton, I don't know what the South 32 is going to be worth, but it's not enormous. No, it's, yeah. not, it's not enormous. They're spinning out all of their, surprisingly enough, all of their southern hemisphere assets. So yeah. South Africa, Australia, the aluminium smelters, we all know them. They're also going into hillside, that our cold side, hillside, that stuff, yeah. the alumini yeah. production in Australia. So they're trying to rationalize. They've got something like, I think it's 41 operations and they want to bring it down to 19, okay. left, left in billet. Does that make the stock attractive, the fact that you're going to get that? Do you think you're likely to want to hold or accumulate more of the South 32s? I suppose this question is the same for all of these companies. Mm. Do you believe that this oversupply and low prices is permanent or temporary? Mm. That's what the would real key. brighten the outlook for commodity markets? I mean, for example, India having India's above average right. growth yeah. and starting to suck in some of that marginal extra supply? There's a couple of things. China mm. must hold at 6.5%, 7%. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it probably will. Yeah. Europe must so show some signs of recovery. So we need more cars needed. Yeah. We need more we rail just need to projects. Be, it, it doesn't even have to be that much in quantum. There must just be good news. Yeah. The U.S. must stay in, in, in the good growth uh, uh, path that they are on, but the most important of all is the high cost producers must scale back. Yeah. They must close some mines. But they, they must, must be losing a lot of money because at fifty dollars uh, a ton, the guys that dig pig iron out of the side of the mountain in Western China yeah. must be losing like twenty dollars a ton. There's the actual problem: mm. is that China, the Chinese government can support these players. It doesn't want them to shut down. Yeah. Because of labor, because yeah. of... Uh, uh, but of course, you can't do it forever. Yeah. I mean, you cannot... So either they're going to shut down or the actual profitable producers are going to say, well, we've actually lost this price war. The other guys didn't shut down. We must scale back to get some pricing power in the market. Yeah. So at some stage, you never, ever have an oversupplied situation forever. It yeah. just does not yeah, happen yeah. That, that way. Same as the... Uh, 
the, 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 the gas guys in North America, they're all losing money below $70. You know, they'll, they'll run their current plant because the capex is in there and they're yeah. still cash flow positive. But at the but there's margin, nothing they're new. starting to. And then they'll sift yeah. out their operations, look carefully which are the higher margin yeah. ones, even if they've said to date they're not going to do yeah. anything. And also, I mean, Billiton, five, well, all of them five years ago, seven years ago, were bragging about how big their capital expenditure yeah. budget is. Yeah. Now they're bragging of how small and how much they've cut back their capital expenditure budget yeah. and cut costs and rationalized and all of these things. So eventually we will get some stabilization but the question is is it this year or next year or the year after and the question as far as hot stocks is concerned is how are we going to call this one we have to go hot or not we have to decide basically at the current level given all of the news flow items and the profit profitability and the outlook and all of that hot or not on bulletin not mm. i'm going to go with not hot as well i mean my feeling is just as you say the turnaround is not imminent yeah and there's going to be a lot of surprises, potentially positive, but potentially more negative yeah. in the forthcoming weeks. But the one weeks. thing we know at an 11 or 12 PE ratio, there's a lot of bad news already in mm. the price. Mm. But when we talk about the other ones, the PEs are far lower than that. Okay, well, that's interesting. Let's go.